Glory, 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 hallelujah. Praise be unto God. It's a great honor to be here and a great privilege. Thank you, Pastor Craig, and my sister, for inviting me. Thank you, all children of God. Uh, if you walk, miracles do happen. You see, I always have my handkerchief with me. By the time we finish, if you feel like crying, cry. But there are tears of joy. Amen. I cry a lot, not only outside, inside. But my tears are tears of joy. You know how people sing songs to praise God? Mine is crying. Because when I look at my life and the great things the Lord has done for me, I won't say I'm not worthy, but I know I don't deserve most of them. So when you start counting your blessings, you find out we are more than conquerors through him Jesus Christ that first loved us. He died for us. Thank you for that beautiful song. Amazing grace, you said? It's amazing grace. Pastor, thank you also for the song, I Need Thee. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs God. Without God, we cannot even breathe. You'd be amazed how quickly things can happen. I saved a testimony. I didn't give it because I know I'd be the one preaching. But I want to share something with you. God is awesome. I don't know whatever you need. God got it. He says, what? I am that I am. Way back I had a dream because I said a prayer to God. God, I want to know you personally. <laughs> and I had a dream. God told me, I am is my name. But in my head, I'm like, God, what kind of name is that? I am. <laughs> I Y A M. <laughs> so I started thinking about it. It didn't dawn on me until a few hours later that God's telling me, whatever you need today, I got you. Jesus is just an awesome power, entity. Whatever you want to call him, it's all right. Some learned people say there is no God. And I argue with them sometimes. But I find out, no need to argue. Because God is God. Whether you believe him to be God or you don't, God is God. And there's nothing you can do about it. God, what? Let somebody read for me, please. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says, if my people... Let's read it together. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Whenever I preach, I have what I call introduction. Introduction to me is that way we all on the same level. No bigger me and smaller you. We are all on the same level. Sinner, preacher, unknown, whatever, adulterer, murderer, we are all the same before God. Okay? Like that song said, I need thee. Oh Lord, I need thee. But why do we live in anguish? We don't have to. There is no reason for that. Because God loves us sinners and righteous people. God loves the righteous, but also he loves the sinners. Jesus died for sinners. Not for the righteous. And money cannot pay him. I'm yet to see somebody other than Jesus that freely gave himself to God. I ran away from God for so many years. If you watch my show, I think for the first three years, all I kept saying is talking about me, 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 where I've been, what I've done. I'm not proud of it. To have wanted to commit suicide, uh, suicide twice. It's just by the grace of God that I'm here. 20, let me see, uh, 1978? No, 1986. I think I don't remember how many years he said. But you know, twice I tried to commit suicide because I felt inadequate. I had marital problem. I was sick. <coughs> Excuse me. My papers were not right. Money wasn't right. Job wasn't right. I had car accident just when I had a new job. But you know, you never dwell on material things. Because God got plans for us. God is the master planner. Not we. Pastor Craig, you've been through a lot. I mean, there are times of discouragement and times when you feel, is this really worth it? Everybody goes through it. In my uh, language, Yoruba, we have a proverb that says, all lizards crawl on their bellies, but we don't know which one has stomach ache. And it's the same with us. We walk home, sister, how you doing? Oh, hallelujah, I'm fine. How you doing? Oh, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. Take off the mask. We are all God's children. We are all the same. Okay? Our job is to disciple and win souls. The Bible say, he that is wise wins souls. It is wise to win souls. Money came by love. The world is upside down today. And we say we love God. Some people decide they're going to kill for God. Some people say they're going to hate for God. Some people do whatever they want all in the name of God. My question is why would God tell you to kill me? Or tell me to kill you? The sun has been up there for years. The moon has been in uh, oscillation for years. Nothing fell down. You want to tell me God cannot kill me if he wants? He got to tell you to kill me. I don't think that's God. God is love. And upon that preset, chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God 
So if your heart is pure, <laughs> why do you have to kill me? Purity. Nothing like purity. And what is pure in this life is love. We are all the same before God. So now, let us humble ourselves and pray and seek God and get rid of all the junk in our heart, in our soul, in our body that are impending us from reaching the fullness of God's glory and blessings in our life. We can make the world a better place. And I'm not talking white, black, yellow, green. I'm talking the mind, the soul. Mind, emotion, your will, your intellect, and your imagination. It's all included. As we think, so we react or act. If I'm busy praising God, I'm using all the gift he has given me. I don't think I'll have time to worry about other people. Hating them, want to kill them, no. Because I have peace in me, I want to give that peace out and share it with you. It's impossible to love God and hate people. It's impossible. The job you are doing, sir, the job you're doing, ma'am, you're doing it because you care, because you love God. When you're weary, you're still strong because God has instilled that in you. The power of love. Going right along, we're going to share something tonight, I mean, uh, today, about God. God is always giving. God is giving in abundance. You cannot run short of blessings of God. The other day I was thinking, God, how much will it cost? <laughs> to get a finger, nail done. Ladies go to the, uh, what they call it, boutique or whatever you call it. Oh, they do the fingers, they look nice. Okay, but how much do they pay? And it's not real. One of my friends was preparing food and she said, oh, I broke my finger. And I started laughing. I said, you broke the, uh, you broke the finger nail, you didn't break the finger. She said, yeah, but it's going to cost more money. And I just started laughing, you know. So now let us be realistic. How much will my eyelid cost? <laughs> Ladies, you all know about it. You make up, you put eyelids on, put uh, nails on, put your hair, style your hair and all that. It costs money. But upon all this, we break your hearts anyway. <laughs> Men break your heart anyway. Not because we don't care, but because we don't know enough. And women do the same for us too. We break each other's heart. And some people say, oh, if it doesn't hurt, it's not love. Hello. <laughs> love doesn't have to hurt. Go read Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. It tells you about love. But where I'm heading is God loves us regardless of who we are. And I'm going to share two examples with you. John chapter 3 talks about a righteous guy, Nicodemus, that got everything but he's felt inadequate and he has to go seek Jesus at night. Okay. On the other side, he's a sinner. 
the lady at the well, the woman at the well that met Jesus. I think that's me. I think that's you. I think that's you. That's you. That's every one of us. Because when we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. And he doesn't tell us to be holy before we come to him. He says, come as you are. Regardless of who you are, seek him when it can be found. It's around you every time. But are you humble enough to say, Lord, here I am. God says, who shall we send? Who will go for us? Sir, that's you. That's me. That's you. God wants us to go out there and make the world a better place. He wants us to share his love with his people. He doesn't want us to kill each other. Listen to the news every time. What is good in the news? Always somebody bombing somebody, some people shooting somebody, somebody doing crazy things. I read on the news uh, some, sometime yesterday that one guy is a talented footballer, uh, basketball player or something, was just blown away. Because he had an argument with his girlfriend, I don't know what happened, and then he lost his mind, went home and he came back and kicked the door, kicked at the door, but that was the wrong door. The guy was sleeping, he kicked on his door, and the guy came out and shot him dead. Wasted life. That's not love. If you love, you consider better things for other people. You don't want to hurt anybody. Things happen. We're all going to die sooner or later. It's how you die that matters and what you die for. People are dying for what? Ammunition, they're dying for riches, they're dying for this, they're dying for that. Are they really dying for Jesus? But Jesus gave us the great commission. He wants us to go out and disciple, win souls, baptizing them, telling them of future blessings, eternal blessings, not temporary ones. Money cannot buy love. This woman in, uh, let me see, John, Chapter 4, you all know about it. Everybody knows the Samarian woman. But where the interest is, is while men are always making excuses and building blocks, Jesus, our Savior, is always forgiving and tearing down blockages. Race should never be an issue. Because white or black, we all have the same thing that make us human beings. If we cut ourselves, we check the blood, it's the same components. We breathe the same air. We hurt we get depressed. So, tell me, what's the difference? The African man in the jungle, the Aborigine in uh, Australia, the white man in Boston, we're all the same. Don't make race an issue. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then everything will fall in place. 
Let us set our priorities on solid ground. Not the ephemeral things, temporary things. Jesus came to die for us and he showed us the way. What Second Chronicles chapter 7 said means a lot. If we humble ourselves, we are human beings we have nothing. We lack everything. God is the owner of this world. He has everything we need. But in our stupidity, we say there is no God. Or we do crazy things because we are able to do it. We are more empowered. No, that's wrong. Race, Satan will use race against you to separate you from your blessings. And when Satan want to do you in, he will use pride against you. He will use doubt against you. All reasons. You are thinking, yeah, this it will justify everything you said and give you more to confuse you. But all he's doing is he wants to save you like wheat. When we want to save the wheat, first you cut it, right? Then you tie it. Then you start whipping it, shaking it. And that's what it does to us. He gives you reason to hate your fellow human being, to be judgmental against them. But have you been in their shoe? No, you haven't. So who are you to judge another? Don't judge. The greatest of Jesus' attribute is compassionate heart. Everything Jesus does is through compassion. It's true love. We win more souls when we share love with them. These pews should be filled by now. I'm not blaming you for not loving, okay? Because all I see here is love. From the first day I came here, as a matter of fact, the moment I heard Pastor Craig talk, I said, now. The Spirit told me, Tunde, that's where you're going. And I came here, nobody knew my mission. I just sat down, listened. Want to see, is he practicing what he said on television? Sir, I honor you. <laughs> I sat down there and I can feel the love. His wife, I've seen her around, I think, at the uh, supermarket. There, there was something about her. She was talking with people. You know, when you see God's people, you can tell. I look at her and say, wow, there is something special about this woman. I didn't know I'm still going to meet her more in the church and know who she is. There is one brother here, he's not here today. He's tall with beard, you know. I don't remember his name. He usually sat in the back over there. Huh? Sorry. Okay. I met him at the supermarket one day. <laughs> that was before I came here, you know. I had money on me. They're rushing to the supermarket. <laughs> I left it on the table. And I got there, I bought everything, but I was two dollars short, you know? And the girl said, okay, you can go home and come back. And I said, no. I kept fumbling, because I thought I had it on me. That brother was standing behind me. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, take it. And he said, the Lord has blessed me. It's nothing. I have to be a blessing to other people. You're teaching them right, sir. 
you know, but it's not the money, it's the thought. It's the thought. So, the way I'm leading in Matthew chapter 4, this woman, everybody knows about her. If you don't, go read Matthew chapter 4 because it's full of wisdom. How we rob ourselves of blessings through arrogance. This woman did everything impossible. I don't know if she prays, but somebody prays for her. Because when she least expected, that's the greatest thing of Jesus. He will meet you at your point of need. That woman was just going to the well to get water. But why would a woman go to the well at 12 o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is at the hottest point? Everybody goes early in the morning or late in the evening. But she went when it was the hottest. Isn't that what we do? We run away from our sins because we are ashamed. She was an adulteress, they said. She married or whatever, five husbands. And you know my people. I don't know. <laughs> you know how we are. You know how we are. Come on now. We talk about everybody's business but our own. Not because we don't care, but because we care. Am I right? Because we care for them. Oh, do you know Jane? That's it. I saw her with James last week. So what's she doing with Richard? And they're not married, you know? Huh? And she goes to church, huh? She's a Christian, huh? All that is garbage. Do you take time to talk with Jane and know what she's going through? No! But we judge without getting a comprehensive understanding of what is going on. God doesn't want us to do that. God wants us to be compassionate. Go to Jane. Jane, what is going on? Follow me to church. Talk to her. Let her know about the love of God. Let her know that Jesus is alive. Let her know the power of love. Give her understanding and compassion. Then people will come to church. I know of a woman. Uh, she been through hell. If you get to know her. She was my neighbor, and I get to talk to her to get a good understanding of what she's going through. When she told me her story, I shared my with her. But the issue is, it came to a point where she lost faith in God. See, that's what Satan does. He want to save you. He want to wreck you. He come to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. He cannot do it when you keep coming to church. Because you know Pastor Craig and his wife and the other ministers here, they will preach you to make you strong. So what is he going to do? He's going to get you at the darkest hour. Put the thought in your mind. What he's doing is is cutting you away from the church so he can do a good job on you. When he mess up your mind, now he's going to bind you up. 
Everybody that cares about you, you will think they don't like you. You will think they hate you. It's binding you now. You don't have any zeal to live. Your goals, you don't have any energy anymore. You are by yourself. Now he got you. He's going to start whooping your head left and right, left and right, left and right. Start drinking, start using drugs, or worse, kill yourself or do something. Don't leave the assembly of God. The darkest, before deliverance, is always the darkest battle you're going to find. In the morning, look around four, three, four, you see the darkest hour. Everything is pitch dark. But about five o'clock, you start seeing the ray of hope coming. Before you know it, it's daylight. The same with us when we have problems. Get good friends, trusted friends. Go to church, talk to your pastor. And better still, do it yourself. <laughs> Jesus said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. He will give you your rest. He will carry your load. He's the best friend you can get. The lady tried everything possible to argue with Jesus. But I love Jesus. See, he knew what she was going through. Give me water. Why should I give you water? You are a different race. Yes, uh, you are a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. <laughs> is, there, is water differentiating? Water is water. Then she made excuses. Well, you don't have anything to put it in. Hey. Which of us is qualified to serve God? It's just by grace of God. We are always inadequate when it comes to serving God. Only by grace of God that we do what we do. So don't think someone is inadequate or they unqualified. They don't have what it takes. Nobody has what it takes. It's a gift of God, freely given. Okay? But God said also, if you draw closer to me, I will draw closer to you. But we don't do that. When we have problems, that's when we run away from God. That's not right. And when people have problems, we should draw them closer to us. So love, not drive them away. That's why people don't want to come to church anymore. Oh, the woman I was telling you, she said, if you had a story, you would feel sorry for her. But she stopped going to church because people talk about her. Instead of helping, they talk about her and she internalized that and then she felt ostracized. She kept away from church. So I'm telling her, go back. She said, go back. You know how many years it's been? 15 years. I'm like, 15 my foot. Go back. She said, nah. I used to sing in the choir. You used to sing in the choir. Who cares? Go back to your first love. Well, what will the pastor say? I said, don't care about the pastor. You go back. Confront the devil. 
That's what you need to do. When they come, let us show love. Let us show love. Because you know what? The greatest sinners are still out there. The greatest evangelists are still out there. The greatest miracle workers are still out there. Before that woman in the Bible, I'm sure there were pastors, there were priests, there were popes, there were a rabbi, whatever, who judge her. And there are neighbors and family members who talked about her. But what I love about Jesus is he's a friend of sinners. If it had not been for the grace of God, I would be here preaching now. Okay? Because I know some people, they talk all they want to talk, but nobody raised a finger to help me that time. And then when I decided, it's a long story. If you watch my show, you hear most of it. When I got delivered, I started preaching. They still talk. <laughs> they still talk. But God, you know what? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, strength, wisdom, understanding. So we should never let them discourage us. As God has empowered us, let us so empower others. Let us be an encouragement to others. Okay? The greatest man is the one that can stoop down the lowest to pick somebody on the floor. You want to tell me you're so great? Don't stand stiff. Bend down and wash somebody's feet. Clothe the naked. Feed the hungry. And bless those who need to be blessed. God bless you.